Hello and welcome to Cardboard Bots. Today I'll be reviewing Stealth Animus Mode by Voodoo Robots. This masterpiece style toy takes its inspiration from Diaclone's black version of Ironhide. The packaging is very retro and it's quite compact. This toy mold is used for their version of Ratchet and also for their version of Ironhide which is due to come out. Maybe. Let's take a look at it in vehicle mode. The alt mode is designed to be a Nissan Black Chariot Vanette. It rolls well on plastic wheels, despite some awkward looking running boards. I've used the filler kit to fill in holes here, 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 and here on either side of the van. It took a bit of finagling and a whole lot of time, but I think it makes the alt mode look really sweet. There are nice details like wipers, trim, and tailpipes. Now, let's look at how we scale in vehicle mode. I don't have any car bots to compare him to, but I do have a KO Masterpiece style Optimus Prime. He's an evil shattered glass version of Optimus. No, no, no. I think that matches this black iron hide. Now let's see it transform into bot mode. The sides flip out, the wheels flip up, pull out the back to become the feet, tailpipes flip back to become the ears, rotate the back windows to become toes. Stand him up on his feet so he's in half egg, half chicken vehicle mode. Rotate the feet. Fold down the back doors. Fold down the underside to become shins. The top windows are a sliding hinge. Slide them and fold them down. The next part is quite tricky. It folds over, rotates down, and moves to the inside of the shin. Everything tabs there except for those back windows. Another tricky spot is untabbing the front bumper. The arms fold down and move forward. The kibble swings back and we can start to flip open the hands. Rotate the head in position and tap in the chest. The back section spins 180 degrees. The rest of the back section folds rather intuitively into a nice tidy backpack. That doesn't appear to tab in anywhere in particular. That's a badass black iron hide. The window toes don't bother me and those feet have a lot of articulation. There's some nice molded detailing on the shins and on the thighs. The wheels tuck away nicely in the backpack. He's got a good blocky look. Besides coming with a silver gun and a black gun, he's also got this nice bio card. It's magic. Shazam! Anyone understand Japanese? Let's look at his head articulation. The top opens up. You can look up and down on a hinge. His head is on a really tight ball joint and it can rotate fully around and it can be tilted. The shoulders can be angled back. It can go up 90 degrees. It can rotate all the way around, no trouble. There's a joint at the elbow and the shoulder. There's a swivel at the shoulder. The hands have limited rotation. Three fingers share a hinge while the index finger has two hinges. The thumb is on a ball joint. And he can smell his armpit. If you untab the chest, you can make him do an ab crunch, which is pretty cool. Hip skirts rotate out of the way. Legs rotate 360 at the knee, which is very useful. And the knees bend 90 degrees. He can achieve some very wide stances. His normal one click out ratchet hip stance is a little wide. I like to leave one leg straight and one leg out just one notch. When Stealth Animus is not holding his guns, he's hiding them behind his back. Check it out, I got a black one too. <laughs> There's a port on his back where you can keep either of his guns. It's kind of hard to access, so what I like to do, I actually stick the gun in his, well, in his butt screw hole. Sort of looks like a knife or a short sword at his back. Let's compare him in scale to some other Masterpiece style figures. Here he is next to Shutter Glass Prime. Don't worry, it's consensual. Mm -hmm. Should I, Mike? How is ya? Here he is next to KFC's Opticlone, which is a little bit bigger than a Carbot, I think. Last but not least, here he is next to Frenzy. Where is that from? I can never tell. They're both rocking a red and black and gold color scheme. I think that's a pretty good mix of bot sizes. I dig Stealth Animus' face sculpt. I find the transformation tricky, but he's highly posable. It's part of what makes him fun to play with. I look at him as a Decepticon, an Autobot pretending to be a Decepticon, or like a shattered glass, evil iron hide sort of thing. So, full disclosure here, early on while I was practicing transforming this guy for the review, it broke. One of the loops for the transformation joint on the waist 
uh, had a fracture. You can see that right here. These loops would line up with a stem from the back section and they would hook together with this thick plastic pin which had also snapped to make a major transformation joint near the waist. There were all sorts of little ratchets, little springs, all holding together in a really tight little spot and it made gluing it back together and fixing it rather difficult. I haven't heard of anyone else with this problem but it's certainly uh, in fixing it has given me a new appreciation for how these things are put together and the complex engineering that goes into them. This has been a stop motion review of Voodoo Robot's Stealth Animus. I had some fun, I learned some things, I hope you did too. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. What gets reviewed next? Will it be the Yes model version of Dirge? KFC's Transistor? Or whatever's in the mystery box? You decide. You've been watching Cardboard Bots.